everyone, Anita here and welcome to another video. Today we have a special picture to paint, um, although I've probably said it more than once. Uh, this one is special because it is a remake of an um, unfinished painting from over a little bit over a year ago. Uh, the original was a fourth of a series of pa five paintings um, and together they created a story. I've started them, but never got to finish them, you know, life got in the way, um, just the, the, the usual. <laughs> uh, my Patreon supporters might recognize that story because the first painting of the series has been completed and was available for my Patreon supporters as an exclusive print. And uh, it also is still available as a full slow painted video. And I felt really, really bad about these paintings. Um, they're still one of my favorite concepts. But I couldn't seem to finish them, because my skills improved, my style changed, uh, you know, slightly, but it changed. And, you know, the old sketches just didn't seem so relevant anymore, and um, I, I just couldn't, couldn't finish them. <laughs> so for this painting, we are working on an A4 piece of a 300 gram hot pressed watercolor paper, just as usual. <laughs> The paper isn't stretched, uh, I went the lazy way this time and just taped it to my board, you know, <laughs> just the usual. Also, all the supplies, if you're interested, uh, all the supplies I've used are in the description. Uh, I really liked how the reindeer from the old picture uh, was looking, so I've used my light box uh, or a light table, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, to trace the reindeer uh, onto my watercolor paper. And then I've prepared a tiny thumbnail sketch to make sure all the elements I wanted to include look good. If you have an idea in your head, always make sure to at least make a thumbnail sketch. Sometimes what I have in my head looks completely different on paper. It's a very good habit to have and I don't sketch much uh, just because I feel sometimes it's like it's a bit of a waste of time. Sometimes it's not, please. Just it's me personally. But uh, thumbnail sketches are very important, I think. It's, you know, it really helps with the whole process. Uh, so normally, I would make that little thumbnail sketch bigger. Uh, I would just enlarge it in Photoshop. And then I would use my light box to copy that composition uh, onto watercolor paper just to make sure everything was in place. But this time, I'm just going straight onto the watercolor paper and, um, and just sketching there, just sketching the elements on the watercolor paper. Uh, if you're familiar with the way my sketches usually look, you will also notice that my sketch is much darker than normally. And uh, that was just another experiment because I really, I don't know, I just really feel like um, I like the way my sketches look in the sketchbook, but they lose that on the watercolor paper. It's not the first time I've talked about it, but um, so I, I'm really experimenting to see how I like um, just to have that sketch a little bit more prominent under the painting. Uh, especially that I use a lot of layers of paint, so most of the time it's covered quite a lot. So that's an experiment. <laughs> it's a painting full of experiments. And this painting, oh my god, this painting took a ridiculous time to finish. And that's because I've used masking fluid, you know, seemed like um, a good idea. You know, you know, with all the details and branches, uh, it, sh it, it would seem that, you know, using masking fluid would save me time, right? Well, uh, uh, no. <laughs> Since I've been having so many problems with my masking fluids uh, in my past paintings, I've decided to skip anything that could just make it go bad. And that included the use of my favorite, favorite heat gun. Uh, because so many of you have, uh, you know, warned me that uh, heat could mess my masking fluid. Mess up my masking fluid? Yeah, something like that. Uh, so I've decided not to use my heat gun. And on a side note, I'm actually planning to make some extensive testing at some point with masking fluids because I'm, I'm really in denial. <laughs> I'm really in denial and I can't believe that my heat gun is bad for masking fluid. I have to see it firsthand and compare it. I will make samples and everything. Just, oh my god. <laughs> it's just because this painting took so long to finish. I'm adding layers of watercolor and waiting for them to dry naturally. 
and that takes ages. <laughs> Especially with my style of painting when the first layer set the tone um, for the rest of the painting and so by slowly building, you know, the layers of paint, I have more control over the intensity of color, I suppose, and the darkness. I suppose it's just easier to add a bit more color than to take it away, for me personally. Um, plus, I really like the texture uh, much better when it's created by many thin layers rather than one thick one. It's just much smoother. I just like it better. It's just my, my way of painting at this moment, you know, that evolves slightly with time. <laughs> so at the time I'm done with the sky, I'm pretty much done with masking fluid altogether. And uh, I've decided at that point that it's better to go between all the branches than to wait for my layers to dry naturally. I wanted to use my heat gun, it was a day after, it took me a whole day to just do that little bit of sky. Um, of course I wasn't sitting the whole time at my desk, uh, I was pretty much just, you know, working, doing something else, but you know, the whole idea that I didn't do a painting in one sitting was really bugging me, that's just my style of painting is just, I, I sit down, I paint, I'm done. So the idea that I had to wait for my layers to dry, I have no patience for that. I've decided just that it was a better idea to um, go between the branches, it would take less time, I could use my heat gun, you know. In my head, at that time, it felt better. <laughs> well, not really. As annoying as the waiting was, the resulting layers were so smooth and nice and even. <laughs> and all I really had to do is, is wait and it just started to appear in my head that perhaps, you know, it's not such a bad idea to just wait a little bit. I have to be a bit more flexible. <laughs> because that painting that one layer by hand to going in between all the little ridges, it was just it was just so annoying. I don't know. I, I was done with masking fluid. And I realized, you know, I could use that time also to, to do something else, you know? Uh, without the masking fluid, I had to rush so that the watercolor didn't create any hard edges. I swear, you know, I swear the first part of this painting should be themed to mask or not to mask. That's how I felt this whole time. It took me pretty much two days to finish that background. Um, <clears throat> eventually, you know, I've decided to just use the masking pen and I'm using the Molotov masking pen. I've decided to use it just because it was, it, it, <laughs> I've decided, okay, I'm gonna wait I'm gonna have nice layers and we will see. I'm gonna think about it after I'm done with this painting. I'm gonna think about, you know, what's more important. Especially that I don't use masking fluid that much, that often. This was an unusual situation. <laughs> so it, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. So after the background was finished, it was much easier to continue. Uh, I've used the same mixture of colors, just gradually added more red to create the foreground. And um, because the background was so perfectly dark, and I really put a lot of effort to make it the way I wanted to, uh, like a night background, night forest, <laughs> uh, it was much easier to paint the layers, The other layers just in one go, so I didn't have to keep layering the color just to get the perfect saturation. Um, and I really went all out with the heat gun. I literally had brush in my right and the gun in my left for almost the whole remaining process. I just I would I would paint the, the layer, heat it, wait for it to cool, and paint another layer. <laughs> it was, yeah, I was just like heat gun hungry.
I'm using the same blue um, to create shading on pretty much every object. Uh, I'm also including brown uh, a little bit, um, just to add a bit more color. Initially, the trees <laughs> were supposed to be birch trees, but I forgot. I literally forgot. After three days of having this painting on my work table, I just, I just wanted it to be done. Um, and missing that one, you know, birch detail wasn't bothering me. I forgot about it, so I just skipped it. You know, I, I just completely skipped it. Uh, in general, this painting turned out slightly different than I would than what I've envisioned. <laughs> but that's only natural. That's uh, that's natural as you paint. And as long as I'm satisfied with the result, then you know it's all good. I'm fine. <laughs> you wouldn't even know that something was missing unless I told you. And you know, I'm doing it just for uh, for the sake of you know explaining the process. So. You don't have to tell me if you forgot some details. <laughs> the character in this painting is very simple. I'm still using only blue, red and brown as my color scheme and mixing them to create different shades for her clothes, just trying to get different colors so that they don't touch too much. Um, and because the, she's so tiny, I've decided, you know, I'm not gonna go all the way crazy with detail, especially that I knew that white details would be, uh, I would be adding white at the end and that would add the, the tiny little bit of detail I was looking for. And the reindeer's legs are drawn like this on purpose, before you start asking. Uh, it's to make them look slightly blurred in motion, you know, because he's running. And um, there will be more detail added with white gouache, and that would make sense, you know, at the end a little bit better. But it was bothering me slightly um, during the process, that's why I'm talking about it, because, you know, um, I'm... I'm Unless you have all the details in, you don't see the full picture. So, you have to remember not to get hung up, I suppose, like I do, on those details. I do that a lot, I get hung up on, on those little details that bother me. And I have to keep reminding myself that it's not all there is to it, and um, there's still more coming. <laughs> so. Also, instead of using colored pencils, uh, I came to enjoy the smoothness of my blue pencil uh, on top of the watercolor. And um, that's something I've discovered a while back, but I've realized while painting that I had so much blue in this. And uh, the colored pencil I'm using is almost perfect uh, fit for the Prussian blue. So I was just going everywhere with it, just deepening the shading like I would normally do with the um, colored pencils, adding that little tiny bit of texture. But because that colored pencil is so smooth, um, it just, uh, it, 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 it's beautiful. I wish I had more, I have to look up if there are more different colors, except only, you know, red and blue. Because I would be very interested in having a whole collection of these kind of um, pencil leads that are a little bit on the hard side. And notice that I'm not doing a whole lot of lines this time. It's another experiment. Uh, watercolor lines done with a paintbrush take so much time in my drawing um, that, you know, they're also extremely boring. Um, that I'm trying to cut it out in favor of other mediums. And uh, I've talked about it before uh, many times this year. It's just something that continues to come back and I continue to experiment. In this case, the blue pencil and Faber Castell artist pen, I think that's what they're called. They were the choice because I had the perfect blue shades of them for the for the Prussian blue. <clears throat> it's really tricky for me to find a nice medium for making lines because I like them, sli uh, I like them slightly transparent uh, and not as saturated as most of my pens are. Um, the little crystal lanterns were a bit of a headache to, <laughs> to paint. Uh, my initial idea was for them to glow in shades of yellow and red, just to add a little bit of a different color. 
Um, however, as the painting changed and I was adding layers, I actually started appreciating the blues and purples, the cooler tones, and I didn't want to add any new color. And eventually I've decided to use pure blue and make the crystals look kind of icy, but not shiny. And for once they turned out exactly as I wanted them to, so that was a big surprise. The last step was adding frost. And yes, <laughs> it's frost, not snow. Uh, I wanted it to snow in this picture, uh, but I also wanted it to be very windy. And I imagine that in that kind of situation, the snow would not gather. I imagine this whole picture to be cold and very, very windy. So I wanted to create frost. <laughs> and I started to experiment with gouache. Uh, I, I imagined, you know, because uh, when I add gouache um, on a wet wash, it spreads really, really nicely. Um, but while it created that frosty pattern immediately after being dropped in onto the wet paper, well, while drying, it would create more of a milky effect. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't keep that, uh, that nice spready effect, <laughs> if that's the name for it. Uh, so it was smooth and milky, you know, for once the way I wanted it to be. Uh, but that one time I wanted texture, so... Um, it didn't matter if I let it dry on its own or if I used a heat gun to just, you know, quickly blast it with some heat. Uh, I imagine it would just stay. If I quickly dried it, it would stay the way it um, spread at that moment, but it didn't. Um, it didn't matter if it was regular gouache or acrylic gouache. It just, it just didn't want to work. Um, so at that point, I really wanted to have white ink. Uh, I've never used white ink, so it was purely because I remember how nicely black ink spread in the water and was exactly the same effect I wanted for my frost. Uh, but I didn't have it, so, you know, I settled on, on just me, um, you know, doing the frosty effect by hand. And uh, it made the whole painting look more like it was covered in frosting <laughs> rather than frost. But I liked it in the end, so it's fine. You know, experiments don't always go the way we want them to. But as long as you're happy with the effect, then it's fine. And at the very, very end, and it was very fun a few minutes after such a stressful painting full of experiments, uh, I've used the same gouache to add a bit of a spattery snow, and I used my paintbrush to make bigger blobs, you know, here and there, for added texture. And that's, that's it guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video, I've tried a little a bit more of an organized and coherent style this time, I even had notes and everything, so, you know, I, I, I came prepared, <laughs> I still rumble, I, I don't think we're going to ever get rid of me rumbling. But please leave a like if you enjoyed this uh, video, or a dislike, you know, if you didn't, uh, both are very welcome. <laughs> if you would like to see more of my videos, then consider subscribing. And if you have something to tell me, then please leave a comment. I absolutely love when you guys comment. It gives me, you know, a creative boost, um, you know, and, uh, and a fuzzy feeling in, in my belly. <laughs> so thank you so very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!